breaking news. Seattle's police chief is speaking right now about nearly four dozen arrests after today's protests. Let's listen in. Sheriff Joe Hanknick is here, uh, and we'll talk to you more about their involvement today. Today, uh, around 1 o'clock, there was an event at the Cal Anderson Park. Approximately 5,000 people were there, and they were gathered to protest. Um, initially, the event started off relatively peaceful, but that group marched from Cal Anderson Park to 12th and Spruce, where some of the individuals broke into a construction site and lit 12, I'm sorry, five trailers on fire. They marched back to the East Precinct and continued a path of destruction on the way. Uh, the event remained primarily in Capitol Hill, but as they were there, the group spray-painted vehicles, broke into vehicles, uh, broke windows, and slashed tires on cars. They broke into a coffee shop and ignited a fire. Uh, Chief Scoggins is here and can talk to you more about the fires that were set today. Uh, there were apartments on top of the coffee shop that were occupied when they lit the fire and people had to evacuate. When the group got to the East Precinct, they breached the fence, threw an explosive device into the building. This device blew an eight-inch hole through the wall of the precinct. At this point, we declared the event to be a riot, and several orders to disperse were given. Uh, the rioters refused to disperse, and officers were hit with rocks, explosives, and bottles. Uh, we experienced prolonged and escalating violence throughout the afternoon. People threw cement blocks from the top of apartment buildings, uh, trying to drop them onto people onto the street. Officers used blast balls, OC spray, and 40 millimeter sponge tip rounds to stop uh, the massive destruction and property damage and the assaults. One of the devices that was thrown at officers was a smoke bomb, uh, which is basically uh, four devices wrapped together, lit on fire. Uh, it's an incendiary device that causes a lot of smoke and also uh, can be pretty toxic to those who inhale the fumes. As I promised, uh, we did not use CS gas today, and we have not, and that is not our intention for any of these events. Uh, we also made about 40 arrests today for assaults, uh, property damage, arson, and destruction. 20 officers, or over 20 officers, have been injured, and one went to the hospital for further treatment. Once again, I implore people to come to the city in peace, we support everyone's First Amendment right for free speech and to gather and assemble in such a way. But what we saw today was not peaceful. It was not a peaceful demonstration at all, and criminal acts were occurring throughout the, occurring throughout the city. And many, many people were at risk, and many people were injured. The rioters had no regard for the community's safety, for the officer's safety, or for the businesses and property that they destroyed. I'm going to turn it over to Sheriff Joe Hanknick to talk about her involvement, her department's involvement today, and then you'll hear from Chief Scoggins. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Best. Um, today, it was our honor at the King County Sheriff's Office to assist Seattle Police Department Chief Best, the men and women, the Seattle Fire Department, and those responding to uh, the outbreak once a riot was declared. My job under state law is to assist when I can when riots occur, and we did so as an agency in this situation. We brought in um, folks to help assist in infrastructure protection, backfill of police uh, districts for 911 calls and have had folks working to provide uh, other assets that are necessary in these circumstances as we call up people, command staff, and others in the sheriff's office that provide support for these actions to include those folks in our 911 center. I want to be clear criminal activity and harming businesses and the people that live in the properties anywhere is not the way to do peaceful pro protests. It's really important that people who cannot defend themselves can live in safety anywhere in the county, but also here in the city of Seattle. It's where I live. And those folks that can't defend themselves from the threat and fear of imminent harm deserve 
to be protected without repri reprisal or retribution. And so um, we are, again, will help serve when called. And I appreciate what the men and women of the Seattle Police Department are doing, Seattle Fire Department, and those other agencies that came to assist today. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Best. Thank you, Sheriff. Um, hello, my name is Harold Scoggins, Fire Chief of the Seattle Fire Department. Our units had a very busy afternoon and evening, as you can imagine, and as many of you have seen on the news. And I'll just talk about some of the things that I talked about yesterday as I go through some of the challenges that we face this afternoon and into the evening. Um, at the one location where the trailers burned, there were four trailers that were completely destroyed, and, and one um, had additional damage to it. And, and that was a challenge for our units to get there. So we had three fires this afternoon that were uh, pretty challenging for us just to get there. Um, and, and that's important to note because in order for us to really do a good job, we, we have to get there. And when we don't get there, um, that's when bad things happen. We were really concerned about um, the um, small fire that got set in the Starbucks because once again, as I mentioned yesterday, there were people living above that Starbucks and that's our challenge. If we can't get there and keep a small fire small and notify the people who live above the Starbucks, then that's when really bad things can happen. Um, luckily, that fire did not grow any larger. Um, that fire was put out, and, and so that worked out well. And then the third challenge was dumpster fires. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, I'll ask again the property owners and business owners, if you can find a way to secure your dumpsters inside of your property, whether if you went to a store and got a chain and a lock so they couldn't be rolled in the street, um, one of the dumpsters was set on fire. And once again, it's a challenge for us to get there. We also responded to 12 medical calls, and most of those were, were for Seattle police officers. Um, the most significant was from the um, improvised explosive device or the fireworks that were thrown, and they had an injury, and there were other burn injuries from the different things that were thrown at the police officers. So once again, if you're coming to, to protest peacefully, hey, we're here for you. We're going to be there to treat you. Um, if you're not, then that's the challenge for us. We have to be able to get to people, to serve people, to provide fire and life safety. And when bad things happen, we can't get there without the support of the Seattle Police Department. So Chief Best, thanks for your support again this afternoon and allowing us to get there and keep small fires small. That's all I have. Do we have any questions that we need to answer at this time? Chief, can you clarify exactly how many people were arrested and how many officers were injured once again? You know, the, the event's still ongoing even now, but the last count we had was over 40 people. And we'll give you an exact number when we have that sometime in the morning when we recap uh, all the events from overnight. And uh, officers injured? Roughly, uh, roughly uh, a couple dozen officers that were injured. And again, we'll have specific numbers. Some of the officers that were injured uh, went back online, so they weren't significant uh, serious injury, but we did have some serious injury as well. Two part question. Um, one, what communication, if any, have we had with DHS uh, today? And are you expecting to have any communication with DHS officers deployed tomorrow? For I haven't had any contact uh, with any DHS or other federal agents today. Um, so if that occurs, um, I'm certain that um, we know, we'll let people know, but we haven't had any contact with them at all. Chief Best, uh, I saw several groups of protesters being driven down Pine towards Broadway, driven down further, but then I saw officers allowing the protesters to head back towards the East Precinct. Could you tell us what that was about, like this, sort of this back and forth? What was that? Yeah, uh, I can't give you all the specifics about the deployments today. I can tell you that we were trying to move people out of the area and disrupt the crowd. The crowd was um, definitely uh, coming back together as they were being disrupted. So again, that was one of the issues that we had a back and forth all day today. And what sort of methods did you use today? Obviously, you did not use CS gas, but what was used today? Yeah, we had said from, uh, early on that we were not going to use CS gas. We know that that causes particular angst uh, for our community. Um, so we did use uh, blast balls and OC spray um, when it was time after the riot had been declared uh, to help us disperse the crowd. Obviously, that took quite a bit of time. We were also uh, taking rocks bottles, explosive devices. As you saw uh, and it's online, there was a, a, 
of device and went right through the wall of the East Precinct. So it was a pretty contentious event all day. Uh, as I said earlier, we're still ongoing. Not everybody has dispersed at this time, but we thought it was appropriate to give a recap of some of the significant events of over the course of the day. Do you know how many officers were injured maybe inside the East Precinct when that explosive Yeah, I, I don't have that number right now. Yeah. Chief Beth, what do you say to the neighbors and business owners in Capitol Hill who are going through this all over again? And you did reference it yesterday that, you know, you couldn't guarantee the uh, businesses would be protected by your officers. How do you respond to that? Yeah, we did everything we could to disrupt any criminal behavior that was occurring. Obviously, we called it a riot because it was a riot, and, the, and we made multiple arrests, almost uh, four dozen arrests today. So we're going to make sure that we do everything we can to protect businesses. Our first priority is always going to be life safety and protecting the lives of others. As Chief Scoggins mentioned, there was a fire set inside of a Starbucks that had 150 residents or so uh, living in the building. So. Um, you know, that it was really important that we get, get fire in there um, to assist and aid others. And um, that's always going to be our first priority. Do you think the presence of federal officers uh, created more violence than there would have been this weekend? Yeah, I can't speak to about the federal officers. You're going to have to check with the feds on that. Chief Best, could you just please tell us what your plans are for the remainder of the evening and tomorrow? Are you yeah. expecting the same type of violence tomorrow? We still have officers out in the field even as we speak um, because the event has not completely uh, seated for the evening. Um, we do anticipate that there will be another event tomorrow, and we will have officers deployed uh, tomorrow as well. We're very hopeful that people will assemble and be peaceful and exercise their First Amendment free speech, which we're here to facilitate, but we cannot uh, stand by while there are acts of violence and criminal behavior occurring. And Chief, All right. I mean, and this we, is the last question, please. Chief, we toured the East Precinct yep. together after it had been abandoned, right. essentially, and you had some strong feelings there. But when you see something like that, an IED blowing through a wall, what do you think? Well, I think it's, it's very disheartening uh, to see any kind of property damage of that nature where potentially people could be very badly hurt, whether it's at the precinct, at the Starbucks, at a grocery store, or any place else in the city. We just don't want to see people get hurt. And we're trying to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to curtail that kind of violence. Thank you. And you just heard from Seattle Police Chief Carmen Best saying that today's protest was not a peaceful demonstration at all. And she said that many people, quote, were at risk. She also laid out the path riders took, including throwing an explosive device at the Seattle Police East Precinct and causing damage there. Best said that SPD used blast balls and pepper spray and that sponge-tipped rounds were fired. Well, tonight, our team coverage begins with Cairo 7's Ryan Sims. He is live for us in Seattle near Cal Anderson Park, where protesters have been for hours tonight. And Ryan, police say this started peacefully at Cal Anderson and escalated very quickly this afternoon. You know, Lindsay, it always happens so quickly, and today was no different. Let me show you a live look here of Capitol Hill. Uh, you can see that things are peaceful, and, and obviously the crowd has fizzled quite a bit from when we broadcasted live here at 5 and 6 p.m. Having said that, though, uh, there is still a lot of tension here. This standoff that you're seeing there in the distance has been going on for several hours here in Capitol Hill. Now, the good thing is that it's been three hours approximately since we saw any flashbangs or heard any flashbangs here uh, in this immediate area. But still, uh, what you're seeing on your screen is capping off a truly intense day in this area yet again. For hours this afternoon, our cameras caught simmering tension between protesters and police, including this takedown of a demonstrator who tried to tear off an officer's helmet. Near Cal Anderson Park, it was an endless game of give or take. Police would advance, then demonstrators would gain ground, and that same line would be crossed by both sides time and time again. By nightfall, police had already arrested two dozen people, including this woman who struggled with four officers. This difficult day it definitely took a toll on people, not just in Capitol Hill, but throughout downtown. Near Seattle's West Precinct, this man told us he was shocked to see his neighborhood change so quickly, so drastically. There hasn't been anything really dramatic happen outside this building since, since May. 
So it's kind of been surprising to me that, that everything has escalated so quickly. Two days ago, like, everything was completely normal. And now it looks like the end of day. So. Tonight, the streets are littered with flashbang canisters. Yet another reminder of the tension that is felt in this neighborhood. And live once again from 11th and Pine. In terms of the damage to the immediate businesses and apartment complexes uh, near this area, the good news is that we haven't really been seeing any destruction, at least in terms of mom and pop shops and again those condos or apartments. Uh, there was some uh, reports of uh, damage to the nearby Whole Foods as well as Starbucks, but at least around Cal Anderson Park, it seems like many of the businesses and buildings near here were spared any damage. We are live at Cal Anderson Park in Capitol Hill tonight. Ryan Sims, Cairo 7 News. All right, thank you, Ryan. And not so far away from Ryan, Seattle's police East Precinct was a flashpoint once again for these demonstrations. Police and protesters came face to face there on Capitol Hill as officers worked to disperse the crowd this evening. You can see the air was filled with clouds of smoke. Police made several arrests, 45 in total, they said, were made today connected to the protests. The Cairo 7 crew was able to get damage there of the video of the damage there to the precinct after some kind of projectile went through a wall and sent debris across the room. No one was hurt there, though police say that more than 20 officers were injured today, with one going to the hospital after being hit in the leg by some kind of explosive device. Precautions were also taken outside Seattle Police's West Precinct. As you can see, officers put up a wall of concrete barricades that were stacked on top of each other. Last weekend, protesters stormed that precinct trying to get inside the building. SPD says 12 officers were hurt during that incident. Seattle police say that the protests devolved into a rampage of destruction as it passed the King County Youth Detention Center at 12th and Alder. Officers say about a dozen people broke off to target that site. Cairo 7's Gary Horker shows us who was victimized by the damage. When the crowd of several thousands began marching, it was large enough to fill a solid city block. And for the first mile, the loud message of defund SPD and Black Lives Matter was peaceful until they reached the King County Youth Detention Center. Now you can see some rioters carried in sledgehammers and began shattering workers' windows in the parking lots. At one point, a rioter grabbed a flagger stop sign and used it as a weapon. At the same time, a row of construction trailers at a site next door were firebombed after about a dozen rioters scaled a fence. Now, this site used to be where the old juvenile detention center stood, but we're told workers here were actually building a parking lot. By the time SPD cleared the scene, Keep going. and Seattle firefighters arrived, five construction trailers were fully engulfed in flames, and all of them were completely destroyed. My tires and they did a whole bunch of other co workers' cars. King County Youth Detention Officer Daryl Bro saw her smashed and slashed SUV while her fellow workers were overcome with emotion seeing the demolition of every worker's car. I didn't deserve this, okay? I'm a hard working individual, college educated young lady, black lady at that, born and raised in Seattle. When she saw her fellow workers' cars also destroyed, Daryl wondered what the point was when county leaders already committed to closing the facility in five years. I don't know what Seattle's doing. I don't know what's going on. You don't want the kids in jail, but they, the kids can be out here running amok, doing whatever they want. Then five blocks up 12th Avenue, there was another target. It was this. Uh, what you're about to see here is uh, probably the most damaged and destroyed uh, what was a Starbucks this morning, everything outside and inside the Starbucks at 12th and Columbia appeared to be shattered, mangled, and looted. Every parking pay station was destroyed for blocks. Daryl heard the chants of Black Lives Matter from the crowd while this was happening, and she said the message is being damaged by destruction. Okay, I'm black. Been black all my life. 40, almost 45 years I've been black. This is what Black Lives Matter does? I'm not with it. Gary Horker, Cairo 7 News.